If you follow my channel you will have seen this machine before. It is of course the Dennis 36 inch Premier mower and um, I bought this because it's got a diesel engine and I was trying to replace my aging uh, petrol powered mower and um, I bought this fairly cheap it was described on eBay as being ready to go but I've had many issues with it the main roller was locked up um, all three pieces were locked together so you couldn't really steer it uh, quite a few other issues the engine seems okay but I uh, don't know how long uh, that will keep going for we'll have to see um, but the issue I want to address in this video is with the gearbox now one of the things I've done with this is to replace all the bearings so there's some bearings on the main roller which I replaced while it was out there are a couple of um, hub carriers inside this um, green housing on the end here that uh, dr put drive through to the two chains and I replaced the bearings in those I also took the gearbox apart and replaced the bearings in that and I noticed while I had it apart that the gears themselves were very badly worn and uh, the idler and the main driven gear had some very severe burrs on the ends of the gear teeth so I ground those off and uh, wasn't really expecting too much it'll drive um, but probably be noisy and sure enough it makes a horrendous howling noise when it's under load now they are straight cut gears so they will be fairly noisy anyway um, but in this video we're going to replace the gears in the gearbox and um, so I just thought I'd make a video some of you may find it interesting if it's not your sort of thing then please feel free to skip this video but we'll start I'll try and demonstrate this I don't know how clearly the sound will come across on the microphone but I'll get it started up and uh, we'll drive it and hopefully be able to hear the noise that we're going to try and fix You can hear it, but it's making a horrendous howling noise. There's a horrendous howling coming from the gearbox, and that's because of the damage to the gear teeth. So first step is I'll get the covers off and uh, we'll see what needs to come out to get the gearbox out. Unfortunately this thing's built a bit like an artichoke and the last thing that comes out is the gearbox. So uh, I'll start by removing the main cover, the black cover, and the green cover on the end and that will give us access to the parts we need to remove. The two covers removed. The next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the two uh, linkages for the two clutches. There's one clutch to engage and disengage the uh, cutter and there's another one to engage and dis disengage the uh, drive roller. So I'm going to dis uh, disconnect these, just unscrew the nuts, take these uh, linkages out and that will free these up. Strictly speaking you don't need to do that but I'm going to do this for reasons that I'll explain later on. I've disconnected the two linkages and uh, the reason I have to remove these is because the bottom one, the one on the left, is actually connected or pivots on the gearbox itself. So this will come away with the gearbox. And this one, I just want to be able to uh, move this back and forth so that it doesn't put any pressure on the gearbox when we're trying to realign it to refit it. You could remove the chains at this point, take this carrier out, withdraw the shaft from this clutch, I want to leave this clutch in place if I can. Um, the other clutch we need to change, I'll come back to that later on, um, but I should be able to leave the chain intact and we'll come back to changing this particular clutch later. So the next thing I need to do is get the gearbox out. Now the only thing holding this in is this crossbar and four bolts at the bottom where it bolts to the uh, chassis. The coupling is just a, uh, it's like a finger coupling, it's not actually bolted uh, together um, but unfortunately to get the gearbox out it needs to be slid this way towards the engine and so uh, you have to do that to disengage this shaft from this clutch because obviously the shaft passes through the clutch plate and into a bush bearing on this plate you can see here but this housing 
uh, is removed that way so you can't just take it out and then lift the gearbox out you have to move the gearbox that way uh, but of course the engine's in the way so the next thing I've got to do is take out the engine I'm not going to completely remove it I'm just going to take the four bolts out that uh, hold it down lift it and uh, push it along I need to lift it because the exhaust uh, needs to go over the um, the handlebars to clear them uh, so I'll lift it, move it along, but put it back down on the frame, leaving plenty of clearance to slide the gearbox out. We can then take the bolts out that hold the gearbox in and hopefully remove it. So next out is the engine. I removed the four bolts that hold the engine in. I slid it back to disengage the coupling and then I lifted it up and over so the exhaust clears the handlebar strut. What I can now do is remove the four bolts that hold the gearbox in, remove the cross piece, we can then disengage the gearbox from the two clutches and uh, lift it out. So that's all the fastenings for the gearbox removed. The next step is to slide it out. I'll need to use both hands to do that. Uh, the splines normally hang up a little bit so what I'm going to do is slide the gearbox that way about four inches and then I can lift it out. Okay, that's the gearbox slid out. I can now take this into the workshop and we can start dismantling it. I apologise in advance for any flickering on this video. I'm not in my usual videoing uh, location and the lights in here do seem to cause flicker on this camera. Uh, okay, as you can see, we've got the gearbox onto the bench. If you're not familiar with working on these machines, this might seem like a, a really big job and um, so far this has taken maybe 15 minutes to get the gearbox out of the mower and onto the workbench so quite an easy job so far but this can be where it gets a bit trickier um, you probably don't really need one but without a hydraulic press this would be quite a difficult job and uh, I intend to use the hydraulic press now I've already replaced the bearings in this gearbox so I know how it comes apart but there is an issue with my hydraulic press that I'm going to deal with before I get back onto this gearbox. Uh, I'll post it in a separate video, but I need to modify it. There's an issue with it that has always caused me a headache. I've got two presses, a large one and a small one. And the one that's in this workshop is the small one. It's just a small 12 ton hydraulic press. Um, but there's an issue with it, a cheap Chinese one, and it really needs to be modified to make it usable for this sort of work. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I won't include it in this video, but I will post a separate video of the modifications. So um, from your perspective, I'm just going to carry straight on with this. Um, but from my point of view, it's probably be a day or so now before I get back onto this. OK, all the parts we need to change are inside this gearbox. So firstly, we have the drive shaft. So that's this shaft here. Uh, then we have the bearings. There are four bearings in here. Now, as I said, I have changed the bearings, but I put a cheap set in because I realised when I took this apart, I was going to have to replace the gears, but I needed to use the mower. So I reassembled it with just a cheap set of bearings. So they were this type, cheap ones off uh, eBay. So these are about two pounds each. And obviously bearings like this are quite a bit more expensive, but well worth it to prolong the life of the gearbox. You don't want sort of cheap bearings breaking up and putting metal particles into the oil that will destroy the gearbox and gears very quickly. Uh, we then have the idler gear and a needle roller bearing that it rides on. And then we have the main output driven gear. Now, I'd like a bit of comment from anyone that maybe specializes in gearboxes and gears. When this arrived, I was a bit surprised. If we look at the shaft, You'll notice that the end of it has been heat treated, so it's been hardened. And that's the bit that fits into the splines. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but the gears, the gear teeth, it's all one piece, this shaft. The gears are uh, an integral part of it. There's nothing actually wrong with this shaft apart from the gears worn out. Um, so the gears are an integral part of the shaft. But if we look at these gears, it's clear that this has not been heat treated. 
and I was quite surprised it's it's relatively soft I can scratch the side of these teeth fairly easily now I did contact the manufacturer to make sure this is how it's supposed to be because uh, as I said the ones that are in there uh, have worn out there's a lot of torque uh, comes through this gearbox to drive such a heavy mower and I didn't want these dissolving as soon as I started trying to drive the machine so I checked with the manufacturer and they say no that's fine you can't harden gear teeth because if you have a hardened gear tooth on another hardened gear tooth they'll shatter which I thought was a bit of an odd uh, comment uh, I think pretty much every gear I've ever seen in a gearbox has case hardened teeth you don't entirely harden the gear you just uh, case harden it and, and harden the surface at least that's all the ones I've seen so be interesting um, to get your feedback on that if you're a gearbox specialist or a gear specialist um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that, but I was quite surprised that these are not hardened. It may even explain why the gears in this gearbox are worn out. Um, but I'll have to fit them. They said they're the right ones. I could possibly send these away and get them hardened myself, but without really knowing the material they're made from, it, it could be uh, kind of a, a very difficult process. So I'll just have to go with what we've got here and uh, hope for the best. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is to get the gearbox apart. So I'm going to start by removing the uh, clutch disengagement uh, lever. That's this green part. Just two bolts at the bottom hold it in place. I can take that out and get it out of the way. In case any of you were wondering why I'm going to all the trouble of dismantling this gearbox again, um, rather than waiting for it to fail, I've used this for about an hour since I replaced the bearings and if we look at the oil, I'm, I'm draining the oil out before I remove that lever because the bolts go all the way through the casing and I don't want all the oil draining out through those holes when I take the bolts out. Um, but you can see that although this was very carefully cleaned out before I reassembled it and it's only run for an hour, you can see there's a lot of sparkles coming out, a lot of metallic particles and that's just the gears breaking up, they would not have lasted very long. And what I didn't want to happen was to have the gears fail and then the uh, gearbox housings being destroyed. Uh, that would be a very expensive repair. And I will point out the parts that I showed you have cost me the best part of a thousand pounds. So this is not a cheap repair, um, but uh, if I had to replace the entire gearbox, it would be many times more expensive. So um, that's really the reason that I'm doing this. You can see that it would not have lasted very long. That's the clutch lever removed and as I said these holes go all the way through so if you don't drain the oil out first then when you stand it back up all the oil will drain out. Next thing to come off is the coupling that's on the other end of this shaft and then we're ready to start removing the clutch itself. To get the coupling off there's just a couple of allen headed set screws that need to be slackened off and then uh, just put a puller on here and what I should be able to do now is just wind this off with the puller. Now I'm going to have to stop it rotating so I'll need two hands to do this. So I put the camera down but it's not normally very tight, it should just slide straight off. And sure enough that slid off very easily so that can be put to one side and the next thing is to remove the clutch itself. So the clutch is just held in with these six bolts. Uh, they're under spring pressure at the moment so I'll just wind these out slowly and um, we can then lift the clutch off. I need to take it off because this will have to go into the press to get the bearing off. So I'll get the clutch out of the way and uh, it will go on from there. So that's the clutch pressure plate and the drive plate removed. The two clutches on this are identical so the two splines are exactly the same and um, that's caused me a bit of a um, a conundrum when the parts arrived. As I said they weren't cheap and some of you may have already noticed there's an issue with this. I showed the new shaft earlier and as you can see it's got a different number of splines. It's the correct uh, shaft and it's the right part number and I did check with the manufacturer and it's the right shaft for this machine. But it turns out they changed the clutch plate at some point in the past and didn't tell me. So when I ordered the parts, including the shaft, they never mentioned that the clutch plate wouldn't fit. So clearly a clutch plate like this will not fit onto this shaft. Luckily these are automotive um, clutch plates and I did call the manufacturer and ask how much it would be for a 
a clutch plate from them and they wanted £150, which uh, I thought um, this repair is getting a bit close to vertical already in terms of cost. So I decided to decline um, that and try and figure out what sort of clutch plate it was. And uh, they were fairly helpful, they're quite uh, helpful uh, people to talk to. But doing a bit of research, um, I found that um, these original clutch plates that were fitted with the lower number of splines, I think came off a, a Hillman Imp. And that's along with the pressure plate as well. And also the release bearing, that's the black uh, graphite release bearing, is also off a Hillman Imp. Um, but clearly that won't fit onto this shaft. So a bit of research and it turns out that the plate that should fit um, is off a, a Ford Fiesta Mark I and that does fit, that's got the correct spline on it but it is a different um, size, it's a different diameter uh, clutch plate. So the question is whether this will fit inside the pressure plate. So we'll just grab the pressure plate. So. As we can see, although the splines fit, it's a good sliding fit on there, the pressure plate doesn't fit. While I'm waiting for a replacement clutch disc to turn up, I'll uh, continue dismantling the gearbox. So the next step is to remove all the bolts from the outside. And uh, these are just nuts and bolts that go all the way through. And what we can then do is separate the two halves of the gearbox. Now, of course, there's a bearing at each end of each of the shafts so um, it takes a bit of kind of prising apart to get the two sections to separate because you have to pull the bearings out of one side or the other of the housing. Uh, it's not too bad if it won't come out we can just warm up the housing slightly and then the bearing should just slide out. Before I take it apart I'll just uh, stand it up and rotate it and hopefully you'll be able to hear the noise that it's making. Okay, so I don't know how well this will come across um, on the camera's microphone, but if I rotate this... Hopefully you can hear that. I'll just try moving the microphone a bit closer, so hopefully you can hear it a bit better. Okay, so we'll try that again. Hopefully you can hear that, it's making a horrendous noise and that's even worse when it's under load. Okay, so I'll get all the bolts out and we'll try and get the two halves of the gearbox apart. I have, of course, as I said earlier, drained the oil out and um, it should come apart fairly easily. That's all the bolts removed. I've also removed the key from the shaft so it doesn't damage the seal when we separate the two halves of the gearbox. What I can do now is prise the two parts apart. Um, there are a couple of locating pins. Uh, one was actually missing when I took it apart the first time, so I made a replacement. And um, they're quite tight, but um, just a bit of gentle uh, persuasion, and these two parts should separate. Okay, that's the two halves of the gearbox separated. I'll get these into the parts washer, and uh, then I'll try and show you the damage to the gears. Um, wasn't this clean the first time I took it apart of course it was full of black sludge but I had this apart a week or so ago and cleaned it out um, but uh, I need to clean it again it's full of uh, obviously the oil residue and uh, also a lot of metallic debris that's come off the damaged gears so I'll get these cleaned and we'll see if we can take a closer look. That's the parts cleaned and the next step is to get them into the hydraulic press and to try and get the bearings off. These bearings, as I said, I fitted a week or so ago, just the cheap set of bearings, because I knew I'd have to change the gears. Although I'm really starting to have reservations about this machine and the parts that I've been supplied. So this, as an example, um, I mentioned about the hardening of the gears and I have contacted the uh, manufacturers and they say the gears that were supplied um, aren't hardened otherwise they shatter which doesn't make a lot of sense you, you kind of have to harden gears at least case harden them otherwise they'll just wear out what I'm talking about is this is the replacement main gear and if we take a scribe and I try and scratch this original gear it's really hard I can't mark it this 
is soft. I can just scratch it easily. I do not believe this gear will last more than a week of operation in this machine, uh, in which case I will send this back to the manufacturer. Um, this needs to be hardened in some way. This is way too soft to use in a gearbox. This is, um, I don't think it's been uh, given a, a particularly hard finish, but it is at least a fairly hard material, whereas this one is just soft. Um, and uh, I, it's almost like 01 tool, tool steel prior to hardening. Now, one of the things I mentioned before is I make clocks, and um, if you're not familiar with clocks, there's a part in them called the pallets, and they are used to control the escape mechanism. So that's what makes the tick. Each time there's a tick, it's the escape wheel impacting on the pallets. So it's basically it's a small piece of brass hitting onto a piece of tall steel. But you have to harden the tall steel once you've machined it. Even though it's only a piece of brass, a very fine um, tooth on an escape wheel hitting this piece of tall steel, um, I did try running a clock once without hardening the palace just to see what would happen. And within three days, it had worn a big groove into the pallets because the machine uh, or the, uh, the part wasn't uh, properly hardened. So I don't really accept their explanation. As I said, anyone that's um, got any experience with these, please uh, leave a comment. But I've got my real concerns over how long uh, this gear will last. And the idler gear is exactly the same. And the gear on the shaft, this is the original, is also exactly the same. Now even though these were, as far as I can tell, hardened, uh, the it's, this is going to be fairly hard for you to see, but the teeth on this are almost destroyed. There's a deep pit and groove on both sides. It's not to be an idler. Both sides of the teeth are, are worn. You can't just flip it over and use either side because um, one side of the tooth is being driven by the input shaft and then it's driving the output shaft with the other side of the teeth. Um, you could in theory swap over or flip over the uh, output uh, gear and use a fresh face and I'm seriously contemplating doing that rather than putting the new one in. Um, but I do have to replace the idler and the input shaft. Um, I just do not believe these gears, this is the original, but I do not believe this gear is going to last. Um, but uh, as I say, hopefully you can see this to a certain extent. Let's get a torch maybe. Try and show you this a bit more clearly. So there is a deep pit on both sides of these. It's very badly worn. And that's what's making the horrendous ding. You can kind of see on the uh, peak of the, uh, the teeth that it's narrow in the center. And this is after I dressed it. When I first got this and took it out the first time, there was a large burr on the uh, one edge of the gear teeth. And that's uh, a clear sign that the gear is just not hard enough. So that's with this gear that is fairly hard with the ones that are supplied. So this is fairly hard. The ones that are supplied just aren't, they're, they're, as I say, uh, quite soft. Uh, but I can't put it back together as it is. Um, we saw all the metallic debris that came out. These gears are just um, destroying themselves and um, possibly they've got through the hardened surface that was there. Uh, but uh, that's going to be the fate of the new gears if indeed they're not hard enough to operate correctly. Uh, okay, so I'll get this into the press. I need to remove this circle clip, um, remove this um, gear, the gear. Um, and then on the input shaft I can just put this into the um, hydraulic press and just press off both bearings quite easily. So that's the gearbox fully dismantled. I've pressed the bearings off the shafts and um, I will be replacing the bearings. They were new a uh, short time ago. I'm not going to waste these bearings. They are the same size as the bearings that are used on the mower in the um, hub carriers. So they're exposed to all manner of dirt and grit and don't last very long. So I'll flush these out and keep them as spares for that purpose. Um, but I will be fitting new higher quality bearings to the gearbox. The shaft, as you can see, um, I don't know how well this is coming across, but the 
gear teeth on this are again totally destroyed very deep pitting uh, also the splined end has seen better days so this shaft is definitely in need of replacement um, same with the intermediate gear that uh, is showing very severe wear um, but this leaves me with a bit of a, a dilemma it's going to get the new larger gear so this is the new gear that I purchased from the manufacturer and I'm seriously considering refitting the original gear but flipped over although you want me to see it very clearly there's almost no signs of wear on what is or what has been the back side of these teeth obviously when it's driving it's been driven on one side of the teeth and um, the other side doesn't really do much and that means that one side of this is showing almost nowhere at all in fact it's still got the original uh, kind of finished coating on it so uh, chances are there's no real wear on the back side of these and the reason I'd consider refitting the old one in preference to the new one is I just don't believe the new gear is hard enough if I put these two together and I get a scribe I can easily make quite a deep scratch on the new gear but I can't even make a mark on the old gear it is much much harder than the new gear and uh, bearing in mind that the new gears or the original gears have worn out and the new gears are softer this gear seems very similar to this one so this may even be a replacement that has just worn out already um, it's hard to say um, I'm just very concerned about fitting uh, this gear uh, it's not cheap this is 250 pounds so an expensive gear from the manufacturer um, but I still think this needs some sort of heat treatment to make it uh, really serviceable in this machine there's a lot of torque goes through this gearbox so what I've decided to do is rather than finish off this project and then post the entire video I'm going to stop it here post the video and um, anyone out there that's got any experience designing gearboxes or working with gears I'd appreciate any comments um, whether you feel this uh, softer gear is going to survive um, please let me know um, but uh, in every gearbox I've ever worked on the gears have needed to be hardened to a certain extent now they're straight cut they're not helical so there's uh, less rubbing but even so I would still expect them to be hardened uh, to a far greater degree than they are on this gear and the new idler gear is the same that's also uh, soft as well so a bit concerned about that so any comments would be welcome